we are now going to begin our analysis of a whole bunch of examples to work on both translating for loops into summations and on analyzing those summations. So here's our first example. This is a relatively straightforward bit of code. These will get increasingly difficult as we go through our examples. So, so first, we observe that the innermost line of code, the one that is most nested inside of loops, this line here, involves just basic arithmetic, adding, subtracting, assigning, all of that. So we assume that that takes constant time. So we're going to write next to it that constant C. And then we can always translate those for loops into summations. So let's try and write down the necessary reasoning everywhere. Let t of n be the running time of func with an input of size n. So we're going to define that t of n, that way we have some more convenient quantity to talk about, and we can always express t of n as a summation. So t of n is equal to the outermost for loop gets directly translated into a summation. So we write that as the sum from i equals 1 to n. And then the second for loop we also directly translate as a summation and write it as the sum from 1 to i squared, and then the line of code, which is nested inside of both of those for loops, takes constant time, that c that we had before, and now that will represent our running time. We now need to analyze these summations. We always begin with the innermost summation, so we're going to start by analyzing that j equals 1 to i squared summation. The thing we always want to identify is does the summation index, meaning j, appear inside of the summation. It does not appear inside of the summation here, which means for all intents and purposes that C is a constant. It is a constant here. So we can take that constant C and multiply it by the number of terms of the summation. So this equals the sum from 1 to n of the number of terms in that summation is going to be the top bound minus the bottom bound plus 1 times the sum and C. And then maybe we do our algebra to simplify this expression. So this equals the sum from i equals 1 to n of ci squared. And now there are several different ways that we can analyze this code. We can either analyze it by trying to use our known formula for the sum of squares, or we can analyze this by bounding. Let's try and do our known formula. In general, that's usually considered better, and we'll see why at the end. So I'm going to factor out the c so that we can try to get it in the nicest form possible. So we have the c times the, the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared. And then remember, off to the side, that we have a formula that says the sum from 1 to n of i squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. And we have actually that exact set of symbols here. So we're going to use that formula. So this equals c times, use that formula that I've written off to the side, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And now we are able to express the running time instead of as a summation as this closed form expression n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all divided by 6. So what we can do in this case, we have a closed form expression. In the past, we were a bit fiddly at the end here and made sure that even once we had a closed form expression, we bounded it above and bounded it below. Here we are not going to bother with that. We're going to start getting a little looser with our definitions. We have done this enough that we I now trust that you can find the complexity of that and bound it above and bound it below as if we were doing the same material when we had our summations videos and when we had our asymptotic notation videos. So I'm going to trust that you can identify that this is in theta 
of n cubed. It's an n times an n plus one times a two n plus one and so on. So from now on, if you have a closed form expression, you can simply identify the complexity of that closed form expression and call it a day. So my final conclusion is that t of n, the running time, is in theta of n cubed. In general, a closed form expression is usually quite good to have because it guarantees that you know exactly how the running time varies with the size of the problem. Here I can tell you verbatim every time, no matter what the code takes that much time. Unambiguously, it's not that it's bounded above by 25 n cubed and bounded below by one third n cubed. And you've got this large range of theoretical run times. Here, I have an exact expression for the running time, which is in theory better than having simply bounds on the running time. So we will try to have closed form expressions when possible, unless their algebra to obtain one is a little bit bad.